Hello everyone. It is always good to proceed with examples along with the theory while learning any subject in control systems. And uh, the previous video was about to adapt or not to adapt. Now I would like to do a, a simulation study in MATLAB to give two examples about one example about not to adapt and the other one to adapt. All right, um, if you haven't watched the previous video, please do so. Um, um, basically, when we cover not to adapt uh, uh, case, uh, we consider this system, a simple system to illustrate the concepts in a simple manner first before we move into higher dimensional systems. And we designed um, a fixed gain robust-like um, control architecture. And from the stability analysis, we end up uh, we end up with with the condition such that you need to know an upper bound on the uncertainty w. Um, and I mentioned that, for example, w. Let's say it is a mass. For some applications, it is lifting. Let's say quadcopter. Of course, this is very simplistic for a quadcopter, but I'm just trying to give you an example. Let's say with, with the load, your quadcopter 2 kilograms, other application 5 kilograms. So you it changes from application to application, so you are knowing the upper bound. Let's say it won't exit 10 kilograms. And when you design, when you choose your gain, fixed gain K, you need to choose it. It's a constant and you need to choose it to be any number greater than W bar. And once you do so, um, you can drive your system state X to zero asymptotically. So first, um, in the first example, I'm going, going to illustrate um, this fixed gain controller. So simulation time is 20 seconds. Um, I am using a discretization. Um, each discretization is 0 0.005 seconds. This is first order Euler's method um, sampling. And initial condition for X, I choose it to be one. W unknown weight, I am choosing to be five. I am going to consider three cases. Case one, I am going to choose K to be 10, six, 5.1. Uh, this is the snapshot of the code you can implement by yourself as well. And um, Basically, 5.1 is a very tight bound. So you are more or less assuming you closely know the upper bound on the uncertainty. And um, here is the uh, fixed gain control architecture. This is basically, this is the discretized version of this system. Of course, you can use fancy discretizations like Runga Kutta, so on and so forth. For this simple scalar example, this is completely not necessary. And this is for data recording, this is for plotting purposes. Always you can stop the video, take the code, implement for your own interests. All right, let's see what happens for these three cases. When you implement the controller for case one, which uses k equals to 10, you quickly stabilize the system like this blue curve. And you basically, this is your control history. When you reduce your gain to six, Basically, you have this red curve, and when you basically choose 5.1, you close with tighter bound on the uncertainty, your system slows down. So, system performance changes, but I am not going to make a big deal about that. Um, so, that's the basically, uh, this is one of the known issues uh, for fixed gain robust control type uh, architectures about performance. Uh, I'm discussed about this when I compare robust control and adaptive control in the very first video introduction to adaptive control and learning. Um, it is the top in the playlist. So for this video, I am not going to make it a big deal, but this is one of the problems. But the main thing is, as long as you choose your gain K uh, more than omega bar, uh, you uh, as expected from the Lipano uh, stability analysis performed in the previous video, X converges to zero asymptotically. Now, I would like to move to the adaptive uh, example, to adapt example. Uh, we have the same system, but instead of using a fixed gain control architecture, I am going to use this 
Adaptive control architecture subject to the this weight update law. Basically, W hat is updated updated according to this update law, and here is the learning uh, rate positive gamma. Once again, in our simulation, I am going to set for this second adaptive adaptive control example uh, omega to be five. And we are going to choose the learning rate to be first one, then five, then 25. Um, here is the code. What I change in this code is that I need to initialize W hat, right? So I am going to choose its initial condition to be zero. I assume I know nothing about uncertainty, which is um, in real world examples, when I implement adaptive control to many other much complex systems, I most of the time um, assume w hat is zero let it learn if i have no period knowledge about uncertainty and most of the case i don't so this is the extra um, this is the extra gamma which is this term um, i am going to as i mentioned choose it like this so this part of the code changed and the rest of the video for data recording and uh, subplots plotting are the same uh, in addition to discretizing the system, I also discretized this um, uh, weight update law. Once again, um, first order Euler's method is sufficient um, at the stage for all of us. Here are the results. I have the same simulation time of 20 seconds. So when you choose gamma equals to 0.1, uh, sorry, gamma equals to 1 versus 5 versus 25, you see that in all cases, as expected, x converges to 0 asymptotically. And when you choose a low adaptation gain, the uncertainty initially affects your system more. And as you increase your adaptation rate, the effect of the uncertainty is much less and you start from initial condition one and quickly converge to zero. Um, basically, right, this series also I promised you we need to understand the adaptive controllers. Um, later in the series that we are going to learn during the learning period, during the transient phase, what I mean by the transient phase, basically, when uncertainty affects your system or before your system reaches the steady state, this is the learning phase of the adaptive controller. Sometimes you deviate a lot with adaptive controllers. And since adaptive controllers are inherently nonlinear, we may not be able to um, quantify this deviation. And this uh, can uh, result in poor transient performance or learning performance with adaptive control architectures. And um, since once again, sorry if I'm repeating myself, this is a very important point. So since they are nonlinear and hard to quantify these overshoots per se, right? Uh, we, we can quantify uh, overshoots with fixed gain linear architectures using um, body plots, um, root locus, so on and so forth. We, we cannot use any of these methods for adaptive control systems because they are nonlinear. These results do not extend to nonlinear control algorithms. So I would like to give the credit to adaptive control, right? For example, unlike fixed gain control architecture, we are assuming nothing about the uncertainty here. Uh, adaptive control adapts and suppresses the effect of the uncertainty and makes x to go to zero. But as this being said, take a note about this transient performance problem. This is especially important for real world applications. Later in the series, um, after we extend these results to higher dimensional systems, we are going to address this poor transient performance that may happen in adaptive control laws. So um, this will be addressed. And okay, turn it back. Um, as you see, as you increase gamma, you are ach achieving a better and better performance. You know, as you increase the learning rate, you learn the effect of the uncertainty and it cancels its effect. Why? This is why gamma is called the learning rate. Now, in this final uh, portion, I would like to talk about, I would like to show you W hat histories for these three cases. Um, first of all, this light blue shows W equals to five. I also want, would like to plot this. And blue is the basically 
how the where w hat converges for case one gamma equals to one then five and 25 and we have the following two key observations observation number one says is that as we increase gamma it much quickly passes w equals to five line you know you can look at here i mean in all cases it passes quickly but if you look at the gamma equals to 25 it passes this line much quickly as compared to the blue line for gamma equals to um, one and this means that when uh, if you pass this line quickly you faster stabilize the system around the zero equilibrium point x to converge to zero you are also going to see the following um, point this is uh, one of the um, good questions that my students or my collaborators often asked with regard to adaptive control architectures as you see from this plot in none of the cases w hat converges to the actual w given in here so in adaptive control we don't expect w minus w hat to converge to zero in fact if you watch the previous video one more time we just prove first, you know, Lyapunov stability of the system, which means um, X to remain bonded and W hat to remain bonded. And then with the help of Barbalat's lemma, I am showing only X going to zero as T goes to infinity. I didn't say any word about W hat will converge to the ideal value. I did not. And, um, my analysis Lyapunov function uh, from the previous video um, also uh, a specific Lyapunov function but this w to converge w w hat to converge w may happen in some specific cases so called if your system closed up system is persistently persistently excited and um well, uh, if not, it won't converge. Is this a big deal? Certainly not. We are not doing estimation here. If you are doing an estimation, if you are not doing adaptation, but let's say you have an unknown system, you would like to estimate the parameters of the system accurately. This is a whole different world. But if your objective is to drive x to zero in the presence of uncertainties, you don't need at all w hat to converge to w. So x is x going to zero? Yes, and we showed this for any gamma value without assuming any upper bound on x bar. All right, so I hope this video, these examples uh, help you to understand adaptive control versus fixed gain um, control architectures or um, to adapt or not to adapt. Um, you can quote these examples, you can change the W, you can change the upper bounds, you can change gamma. Um, and I strongly encourage you, if you are deeply interested in adaptive control, to do this study to increase your understanding, to get, you, to get your own feeling when you implement adaptive control signals. All right, um, stay tuned for fancier stuff in the follow-up videos.